We are throwing it over to our Bahasa counterparts, but for all of you all around the world, welcome, welcome to, to the land of Don. This is Match Point Blacks International sitting at 2 1 against RQ Hoshi. Really, I cannot emphasize this enough. Match point is what's at stake here, ladies and gentlemen. This is game number four in the favor of Blacklist International. RQ, it's up to them to try to equalize. Results has not been well for the side of RQ, but Blacklist International, this is still, technically speaking, a upper bracket. I've seen this again and again, but the Aegis has been used very early by Blacklist every single time. Yeah. And look at this Rome coming in from Hagi. Oh, that's Might a just pay load off. of damage. The Petrify will be able to walk on the way. It's now Edward time to fly away. But Clay is there. He's trying to do all the chaos. But the oh. sun coming out from Clay. What is going on for the side of Blacklist? An eye for an eye. Edward missed it. And that's just how the world goes. Everyone blind when violence rules. Oh man, this is what I was talking about. This is what we were talking about. Yep. If RQ puts so much on the board, Blacklist can't answer back. Another thing that RQ needs to really pay attention to take advantage of this is the potential of the fact that early game, Blacklist should be weaker. Of course, they have a lot of late game heroes right here. Too many. And in, in the mid lane at least, the Farsa can be a big problem. But everyone else needs time to scale, especially Oheb and Wise, the two main carries. So that is the window that RRQ can take advantage of. And they are no stranger to this position. They know how to take advantage of their opponent's weaknesses. Yeah, something interesting as well, if you notice how Wise is actually taking the stacks, but Hono Skylar, Skylar is actually getting caught by this uh, Estes Circle as well. Vin doesn't really have the ultimate, so has a dot out of that. They touch and they go, Skylar takes some damage. Lord spawning in a few seconds. You can see how uh, Wise is hovering around his purple. And you mentioned those stacks. Yeah, this is just Blacklist's effort to stop uh, this this uh, rampage of RRQ in the early game. I mean. Now with the turtle spawning, actually, not not the Lord Leo, <laughs> a, a bit too uh, uh, eager here, but Skylar here gets jumped on. Oh. Double balls going in. Haji will be in and out the left by the air strike. At the same time, he's going to be in. Doesn't really have the divine judgment. He's actually going to get denied. Not a very good fight coming up on RRQ, losing their maximum. But here we come. Oh, Vin. Okay, gets marked, but Blacklist will not pull that trigger. Ooh, that's unfortunate, man. They almost got the kill onto Oheb, but they're a bit too clean with it. The battle spells are available, but as a result, they're able to get the turtle, knowing that there's a, a lot more members of Blacklist in the bottom lane. Edward is coming in, being a bit of a menace there. But so far, it's still pretty even, and Blacklist are the ones actually with a bit of a gold lead, not the start that RRQ is looking for. You know, Arashi, I will agree to disagree right here, right? Because you don't want to be even against a late game comp. You want to be ahead. Right now, RRQ is just barely scratching the surface in terms of the goal lead of, the, of Blacklist. But let's take a look at the items, Leo. Well, I mean, you can see that the far side is building towards the Clock of Destiny. Later on, that will be a big problem. The earlier, like, Haji gets it, the more it's going to be a problem. But for now, you can see Albert just happy feet, dancing around. Happy feet. But there's just, without a real solid engage, so far, no real movements happening just yet. Vin, though, is the one person that can change that. You know what surprises me is the fact that top lane has become mum. After that action packed 30 seconds, <laughs> Edward and R7 are like, yeah, no, we're not doing it. But bottom, though, Zaman nope. Force forced out. And uh, Vin and the rest of our Yoshi in uh, the vision, in the sights of Black Sin International. Again, I miss this. This is one key use of the Aldous Ult. It's just for pure vision. Just you ulting it for vision, that is definitely a, a creative use of the ultimate. And knowing how Blacklist can maneuver around with vision, right, with information, that is a very dangerous weapon, and RRQ needs to respect that. At any moment, they like setting up traps, and it can be exposed by that Aldous as they make a move towards the bottom side, but yet no real result right here. This, that, that's the problem about the Kaja, right? You need to rely on the Flicker ultimate to land down the Strucks. Like, let's take a look at the Emblem for now. As both the two teams, they won't be able to find anything on the bottom side. It's just a lot of movement speed and cooldown. I mean, it's just how it is, right? Utility becomes so important for both these teams right now because both of them are not making simple mistakes. They need to be forced into those errors. Otherwise, it's going to be a very slow and calculative game. 
So with that being said, I think that RQ has a bit, a uh, few more tools to work out with. The Blacklist have the counters as well. This is why the drafting phase was just so confusing, so difficult to predict. Yep, again, uh, something tells me that Aldous banned from a couple of games back in the series. Coach Arcadia, Coach Achil, they were on the Blacklist. They knew that this was up. So here, five minutes in, second turtle going for free over to RRQ Hoshi. Blacklist knows their timing still. They know that this is not the time to fight. I respect that, right? If you notice, even the crowd, they identify that there's no point for Blacklist to try to contest the turtle. RQ, I think the main goal right now is to try to take down as much structures as possible, especially the top bottom side. You don't want to allow Wise to just walk around gaining resources. But I mean, you can see the Blacklist is trading very smart, intelligently as well. They are not letting go their towers for no reason. They always try and find something extra, and this is why it's so annoying. Once you think that you have an edge over Blacklist, they just equalize, and look at the damage though. No. That, is, that is something that RRQ can definitely use. What, what damage? See, he's feel fully healed. Right now, it is Blacklist time to do the damage. This is kind of oh. crazy, but here comes a dog. It is going to be all my minutes like actually taken down. R7 will be trying to look for the pickup right here on the back line, but I don't think Blacklist is ready for the fight right now. And what is actually trying to just try to find some time. Elba makes up another kill. R7 will also do that now soon. Three member going down. This is not a fight that Blacklist International want to do. We just had to call it, right? Vin with just a split second to the side, pulls Oh My Venus into RRQ's death ball, and they get three for free. Now they're gonna capitalize, Good. push this top lane tier one, and now the map is much smaller. How can Blacklist recover? I mean, James was saying, what damage? That's the damage you're looking for, man. <laughs> when they combo the spells properly, that is a lot of potential pickoff for the side of RRQ. It's not just Vin pulling out on my Venus to ensure that no healing is done. It's also R7 with his eyes set onto Haji at every single fight, one-shotting him if the Petrify is available. It's not so easy for Blacklist. Again, yes, they have the vision. Yes, they have the box, the space. But when you're fighting a lineup like RRQ has, again, that's a mid Lunox. Real wall manipulation. Uh, sorry, not a real wall. Feather airstrike going in. Nothing can be found for now. Skylar doesn't connect the render shot. I think right here, Blacklist International is just desperately buying for time. His gold lead still okay for RRQ, but I think they need to do more. They need to crack open mid lane. They're still leading right now, but they're also working against the clock. The late game is dangerous, but the early game. And we're getting surprised, but he'll be able to get out alive right into the healing wow. hands of all my Venus. That is the that, that is the question I ask here, Rashi. What damage? Well, fortunately, Edward was able to survive in the situation, and now Blacklist are the ones actually trying to make a play, but they're sandwiched oh. between our two. That yeah. might not be the best result. And not only just that, it's going to be Skylar getting tagged by the Elders as well. Haji going in, the Zaman Force already committed at the same time. Little is forced to use the brilliance, but now R7 is looking for the engage. Elba trying to look for the back line. It's going to be the Zaman Force, but Elba will be taking down the Queen for now. This is not a fight. Once again, Blacklist is not ready, and they will lose two members. This is a battle of combat mobility, right? There's map mobility, there's combat mobility. You saw how Wise had to walk through the walls. You saw that he was like, oh, Albert, that's not fair. You're on top of the walls. He just couldn't join the fight. <laughs> and that's just one weakness that Blacklist has oh just God. built in. And now, RQ is going to choke off this those resources. Personal. Yeah, this is, this is tough. This is revenge from game three. RRQ is saying that this is personal. Literally taking away the purple from Blacklist. Looking at the items right here, Blade of Despair, and a Malefic Roar, competing for Skylar is going to be a lot of damage. But looking at R7, he only has the Hunter Strike. That will be plenty to deal with any squishy member. And as you mentioned, Leo, if they can't kite away, if they can't find ways to survive from the Black Dragon, it's going to be a very tough backline play for Blacklist International. And look at the clapback, right? Look at the capitalization of RRQ. Straight up, going for that inhibitor. They pop the shield. Whoa. They left oh. a little bit. Oh, oh, my Venus! No way! Vin going in for the dust! Normal healing from the side of Blacklist. But it is going to be RRQ losing R7 for just that. Wow, that was a great play, but R7 goes in very, very aggressively. And unfortunately, he gets taken out. It might not be the best scenario that RRQ is looking for, but nonetheless, they're taking away all the turrets available for Blacklist, trying to make sure that they have all the macro advantages they need to deal with an Aldous in the late game. You know what's curious is, in that engagement, Oh My Venus didn't use the ult, Oh My Venus didn't use the Aegis, so something tells me it was all according to plan. Exactly. Uh, 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 
Blacklist, all Ambulance has died probably two times already without activating the ult, without activating the Aegis. This is not a very good game. Blacklist is still not on form yet. Right now, RRQ, they have the tempo and they're trying to push as much as possible. This is, a, once again, a little bit too personal against Blacklist. They want to make sure that they get all the buffs available, oh. deny it from the side of Blacklist International. But Haji secures yeah. it. Haji and, secures but that. yet Haji is able to secure it. This is why it's just so irritating. But now knowing now that R7 has the Petrify available, it's going to be a very dangerous fight for Blacklist to try and commit to if they want to try and contest this Lord. Yep, it's already spawned and there's four men here. R7 in the wings. Nope. Clay just making sure that they make quick work of it. And just like that, Blacklist on the back foot. Why is securing what little resources he can? Run, rise! Oh! That's all of our two on you! Oh. Finn, the Katsu play going into slow. And here comes the dog. Rise will be the backup of RR Kills. Feisty pickup. That is the potential, man. When you have the map control, you can ensure that even though Wise is near his turret, it does not even matter. Everyone else needs to deal with the other lanes, and that is how you can break up this team fight centric composition from Black Lives International. That Take damage. A look at the items right here Cut of Destiny and Lightning Truncheon done for both the Lunox and the Farsa, but on the other hand, Demon Hunter Sword built by Skylar to ensure that in those long, prolonged team fights, the DPS will still be readily available. Worst case scenario, Blacklist International loses an inhibitor or two. Best case scenario, they find a way to defend inside their base. But at 11 minutes, with almost 7k ahead, RRQ Hoshi, it, it, it's looking like it's worse for wear now. They can't fight, not like this. Better try going in the same time. The Brandish oh. will be able to call it on Hop Haji, but the Hop is already getting broken for now. Being trying to have down. It is once again the Queen, but we will not be able to survive any longer. It's going to be wise trying to chase out, trying to burn, but the Lord is actually forgotten by the side of Blacklist. RQ, they take the Queen and the top side. Two for one. And throughout all this, they take down Skylar, and Oheb is sitting at zero, zero, and four. Albert choking away at Wise's resources. Arashi, at what point can we say that Blacklist can clap back and Blacklist find a way in? Because so far, RQ Oshi, I think they're willing to make these trades for permanent objectives. I mean, RRQ, they have lost like 5 feet gold lead, but now Haji's in jumped on. Oh no, that is big. Problem from the side of Black. Oh. It's gonna be all trying to desperately try to shut down the dreams of RRQ, but he will lose his life as well. It's just three. It's a scrappy fight. This is a reckless trading yeah. being done by RRQ, and it's not good. Whenever teams start trading kills back and forth, the team with the late game composition usually comes out on top. With a Harith, with an Aldous in their squad, it's gonna be a bit dangerous for RRQ to keep doing this. They have to play calculate and ensure that Blacklist gets you know, locked into their own base, because otherwise, it's gonna be very difficult. Man, look at this. Why is it just like getting free stacks? Yeah. Just serving up to him like a, on a silver platter. Like a buffet. Like a buffet. Like a buffet. Um, he's, he's building a hybrid. This is the El Clasico Aldous Blacklist uh, build. You have the Brute Force, you have the uh, Thunder Belt. One Malefic Roar just for sure, just for safety. And then he's building an Athena Shield. For RRQ Hoshi, I mean, again, they've grown so much from the draft from game one to four so far. Yep. Coverage, check. Protection, check. Aggression, check. And now, this is a Luminous Lord. This could be it. If RQ takes this, and then they win more team fights, it's over. We're going to game five. It's about I the positioning of Haji. That's a lot of damage coming out of Skylar, but all my business is around there. I don't like how all my business is actually positioned. And once again, right into the hands of Finn! Real Woman Major just really trying to cover the damage, but R7 will be there. It's going to be oh! in the middle of the natural. But here it comes! Wise! He is hungry for the kills! And Blacklist International shuts down RRQ! Three for none! Three for none! And they're gonna go for the Lord! Right at the least Albert. point! Right where you did not expect it! Blacks International claps back in Albert. just in time! R7! Oh. R7! Another point over the side of Wise. The stack is so unsurmountable. Haji forces the Elba to run away. Lord given over to Blacklist. 4v1 Arashi. What's our cue to do here? They have to try to recover, man, but the gold lead is down to 1.4k only. It is a 
very dangerous situation for Araki to be in. I was about to say before the previous fight that Edward is the unseen member that can be a deciding factor in these big fights, and he completely delivers. He turns it around, and now Blacklist are the ones with a gold advantage. Good. What a disaster for Araq. Once again, it's so weird to be fighting on this side of the map. Haji activated by the air strike at the same time. Being one of them be able to catch up for anyone for now. And it's going to be RRQ zoning the uh, sorry, Blacklist zoning RRQ away. For the better part of 15 minutes, I get you, Jay. Is the fact that we haven't seen Blacklist cross the river in so long. That's just the result of the hard work of the mission accomplished by Agent Zero. You're right. Edward has been doing so much to draw lines across the map to make sure that Blacklist can make moves and can clap back the way they have now. And just like that, the goal lead swings oh. over it. Is that? Oh, Albert failed! Albert, Albert take it. missed the purple and will get ultimate right now. It's been a moment on the side of RQ as well. And this is a big problem. Blacklist International has a bit of gold lead. Off, off the bat, Blacklist International now has the lead. They have equalized in the gold division. They have a lead in range and they also have a lot more sustain and an infinite scaling hero. On paper, this is a done deal, but RRQ, they are known to do something so crazy, it might just work. That is what we're looking for right here. They have tried to just pick up Oh My, oh my Venus and Haji, and so far it's been working oh, kind of. They need something better though. Wrong neighborhood, Ben, that's a bad place. Suppress is going to be OM as well. That's oh. right, there's no way OM to be in. But here comes Wise, that'd be great for the back line. Look at the damage coming out from oh, Wise on top of OM. It's on top of the Skylar, and none of the RQ members actually fall. The fight, Ben comes into a little bit too long. Blacklist needs to desperately to get out of the way. Albert, the healer, is gone. RRQ, they reign supreme. They're looking to end the game. This is personal. The last two members of Blast International on the map, Edward and Wise. No way. RRQ oh. are on a manhunt. And no way. And then Wise, it's over. It's, it's over. over. 5v1, Edward, he's fighting for dear life. Can he do it? Oh, I don't no. think so, Leo. RRQ will be equalizing the series. We're going to game five, folks. Woo! We're going to game five. The Sang Raja claps back. Not here, not in our home turf. We're going to game five.